Hello friends, today's video is for understanding software structure of timer component in detail. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched the previous video on LED blinking using timer interrupt. I will put the video link in info button and in description as well. I will be explaining only theory here and there won't be any demo. But if you can understand the concept which I am explaining today, it will be very useful in debugging any issues overcome in your program. And also, it will be making you enable to change your timer configuration easily. So, let's start. In our last video, we have seen blinking LED using timer interrupt. There we have used basic timer, right? One feature of basic timer is that it just counts from 0 to a pre-programmed value. This pre-programmed value is stored in auto reload register or we can call them ARR. Suppose if we set the ARR value as 5, then timer starts to count from 0 to 5 like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Once it reaches 5, it is reset by itself and restart the operation and it will trigger an event or interrupt. We can take an example here. Suppose if count clock is 1 MHz, Thus the counter register will be incrementing every 1 microsecond, right? Suppose if we want to generate the timer interrupt at every 5 microsecond, thus time pace record will be 5 microsecond. So how are we going to calculate the ARR value here? It is uh, 5 microsecond divided by our counter time period, which is 1 microsecond. So we will get 5. Now we will see how timer will work in this case. Once timer starts, counter register will start to count up from 0. Every count will cost 1 microsecond. So let's start the timer. So now counter counter to 1, 1 microsecond elapsed. Now 2, 2 microsecond elapsed. Now 3, 3 microsecond elapsed. 4 microsecond elapsed at counter value 4. 5 microsecond elapsed at counter value 5. Timer rolls back to 0. We go timer interrupt 6 microsecond. Something fishy? Did we do anything wrong? Yes, counter should rolls back to 0 when it reaches 4. Then we will get time base 5 microsecond as required. So we have one solution here. Always use 1 less than the calculated error value. In our last video, we have used the same calculated error value and we couldn't notice the difference because it was for 0.5 second time base, which is quite higher time base compared to the counter clock time period. However, always do this practice of subtracting 1 less than the calculated value for better results. For our easiness, we can use this formula for ARR calculation. Or you can prepare an excel sheet and try out feasible values for ARR by adjusting prescalar value like this. We have already seen HL library provided by HTM, right? So actually HL library is an interface application between our application code and the MCU peripheral. Most of the peripheral component is associated with a handle so that we can easily configure and access their parameters. For example, we can take timer handle. In our program, we are declaring this handle at the global section. HTM6 is the handle name here. So if we go inside the handle data type, we can see several member variables. This set of variables will differ for each peripheral. But first two variables typedef and init typedef will be almost similar across all peripheral handles. As I said earlier, we are using handles to configure MCU peripherals easily. Its configuration is done using registers associated with them. We will see some examples after some time. So registers will be stored in the memory locations. Thus there should be some memory addresses to store each register, right? Each peripheral is associated with a range of addresses and the starting address is called base address. For the first variable instance, we are assigning the base address of the timer peripheral. In this way, we can link the application code and the peripheral. To get more understanding on this, we can just uh, check the MCU reference manual. So in the reference manual under system and memory overview, click on memory organization. If you scroll down, you can see this memory map. This is showing address of each peripheral bus used in the microcontroller. If you scroll down further, you will see this table where the addresses are listed for each peripheral associated with the bus. We know our timer 6 is connected to APB1 bus. 
So we have to look for the address of timer 6 in APB1 section. Right now please don't bother about other buses like H, B, APB2 etc. We will understand those one by one in upcoming sessions. Timer 6 is spread over between these addresses 0x4000100 to 0x4000130 f Means there are several registers in timer 6 peripherals. So each register will be allocated addresses in this range. Just for an example I can show you registers associated with timer 6. So you can just click here. So you will see that this time x cr1 and here x denotes 6 because we are using timer 6. So it is a 32 bit register. This register is stored in the first address location. So here offset address is 0x00. Next register time x cr2 it is stored in the next immediate location. So since time x cr1 consumed 32 bit or 4 bytes time x CR2 will be located at 0x04. So if you want to know its absolute address it will be base address plus the offset address given here. So here in this case it will be 0x4000100 plus the offset address that is 0x04. So it will be 0x4000104. So this goes on. So we can get familiar with each register once it is used in our program. We can go back to timer handle now. So next member is init. So this holds the timer block parameters. We can go inside the init. Here you can see all those prescaler and period which we configured using the cube software. So that's all about we need to understand about the timer handle. As we can see timer methods or functions available in the HA library. If we use any peripheral we have to use its init function or the initialization function. So for that we can go to main function. So timer 6 init we can go inside this function. You can see values which we have configured using cube software. So instance is timer 6 and prescaler we have given us 700. Then we have got this period. So using these parameters we are initializing timer 6 peripheral using HL time base init function. So if there is anything wrong in the parameters it will trigger an error and it will drive the program to the error handler which we can define in our application code like this. Basically this initialization process is setting the required registers of the timer peripheral. For example we have put some value in the prescaler variable and when init function is called the timex psc which is the register associated with the timer it is loaded with that prescaler value. So you can see in the manual and similarly for period or auto reload register value is stored in timex arr or auto reload register. Timer implementation we can done using polling method and interrupt method also. So actually we have done uh, our program in interrupt method which is more efficient method. But if there is a requirement comes you have to go with polling method where we have to observe if timer is rolled back to zero after which matches the arr value. For that purpose after starting the timer using hal team base start function we have to check contents of sr register in timer please note that this function is different from function which we have used for starting timer in interrupt mode in the interrupt mode first we will start the timer using hl team base start it function then in it.c file there is time 6 dsc underscore irq handler function where it will be excited once the timer interrupt occurs this portion is generated by STM but our uh, role is callback implementation. If you go inside the timer library source file you will see several conditions which are causing timer interrupt. In our case the reason for the interrupt is elapsing of period. So we will go with this callback HL time period elapsed callback. So we implemented this callback with suitable actions in our application code. So in our case it is uh, toggling the LED. So toggling LED means there is a GPIO peripheral associated with it right. So similarly we have to follow same initialization steps which we did for timer also. 
but we will continue about the GPIO peripheral explanation in the next part of this video because I don't want to make a very long video. Thank you all for uh, supporting me by watching my videos. So stay healthy and stay happy. Bye.